Hey folks, Kevin here. <clears throat> it's June 18th, 2022. I'm in Pepe right now. Uh, the temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm freezing. I've got my sweatshirt on. We've had these really hot, humid days. Now, uh, I don't know what the wind chill is, but the winds have picked up again. The winds got so bad the last couple of days, it's dangerous working in the forest, so I haven't done much in there. But I thought what I'd do is take a I'm going to take Elon down. The winds have calmed down some. I'm not sure what the gusts are. But in the area I'll be going to, uh, I'm not as concerned about trees coming down on me. Keep my fingers crossed. So uh, one of the things I've been doing over the last couple of days, as you may recall, in the Hulu Culture Pit, the most recent one that I just posted, I dug a big hole and I took a lot of sandy gravel. Most of it was sand. And I took that material, and you could see, it wasn't great footage, but you could see the Hulk, which is a Takushi track loader, uh, a TL-12 V2. I was taking that material and depositing on top of some old stone wall material that I had deposited in the past. This is so I can get to one of the excess roads that I need to do more work on. But because we've had such a wet spring, in, uh, and I guess almost early summer now, uh, I've had to uh, get, it, it's just so wet that uh, I thought putting gravel in there would work out, but most of it was sand. And I really started sinking in there uh, when I went to bring some stone. So where did I get the stone from? Over here, uh, this is was a stone wall. It goes up there a little ways, but I used Elon <coughs> and the Hulk, uh, the excavator and the track loader to dig material out. And I did get the Hulk stuck up there. I don't know if I'll show that video. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's a bit of a hassle. I've got some, uh, I got it unstuck. The uh, precision armor and the 17,500 pound winch, along with driving the unit, I was able to hook onto a live maple tree right over here. But these are all dead trees. All these ash trees are dead. Most of the trees that you see around here are dead, uh, which I had to get the equipment out of here so I didn't worry about, uh, you know, having a tree come down on me when we had the, the big storms and all. So what I'm going to do now is we'll go down and take a look at the area that I moved all the stone to, which I basically deposited in on top of all that sand. So we'll take a ride down there now and see. swing over by the pool culture pit that I haven't finished yet. There are some big dead trees there and I don't want to take Elon over there yet. Not until the winds calm down. I did get a question from uh, Cabo uh, about the pressure treated boards and there are a couple of pressure treated boards down in this uh, area here that are towards the surface because I've been working uh, working more on the fence area making it a living fence and so you can see there's a couple of those two by fours that are decomposing. Uh, let me turn this around. So uh, what I'll say is that uh, 
Cabo actually said, you know, is there anything I can do to help with the breakdown of the material that's in the, I'm trying to adjust this camera here, that, that can uh, help break down, facilitate breaking down this pressure treated boards. Now there's very few pressure treated boards in there. So chromium, arsenic, and uh, copper are, I think of the three main elements. There's also some azoles in there. So the chromium, the copper, and the arsenic are all element, break down into their elemental form as, as they break, so it's, it can't get broken down any further. And because the boards had so much decay in them, we know that the azoles, so uh, you may be familiar with fluconazole, ketoconazole, these are antifungal uh, medicines that we use. And uh, so those azoles, actually uh, damage the fungi that can break down the wood products and all. But since that wood is already broken down, starting to be broken down, uh, it's exceeded the capacity of the azoles that they put into that pressure treated wood or they didn't include the azoles in it. But along the forest floor, all the materials along the forest floor loaded with beneficial uh, fungi and they can really help facilitate as, as well as there's a on the forest floor there's this huge network of microbial communities that work together uh, so that's pretty impressive and so here's an example of some of the grapevines <laughs> I grabbed a hold of the edge of this but I got nervous because that tree right there is dead uh, there's several of them in here that are dead and, uh, and as you can see, the vines just go right up in these trees. And if I pull too hard on some of these vines, oh, here's the other uh, dead tree right here. Uh, so all we have to do is, is have a windstorm around in here. And this puppy could come down and, and crush, well, d damage my, my heavy equipment. So this is where we got the sandy material out of. And I'm going to go over to the area now where uh, where I deposited the sand and I needed to go and go get the stone to put in it. And I'm going to come down here in a little while and work in the area and see if I can get, uh, bear with me here one second, see if I can get uh, the area smoothed out some. It's tough when the, when the ground is so wet. sand over all of this stone that's here. 
This is the upper beaver pond. And this is the upper dam wall. So you can see, I don't know if you can even see, there's a heron's nest right over here. There's multiple heron's nests down there that I know you can't see. But you may be able to appreciate there's uh, some of the young herons that's standing in this nest right here. Water level's pretty high up in here. Uh, don't see any significant waterfowl right now, but we'll just drive around here and then I gotta go get Elon and get some work done. on all these places that they're working through. This is the lower beaver pond here and the lower beaver dam over there we're going to drive off in a minute. Again, more of the spots the beaver have been working on here. Move one of the cameras down here so we can watch the beaver at nighttime. That's one of the trail cams, and my brother Jim had asked about, you know, posting another video with it. But I've got so many hours of uh, footage, and a lot of it, the wind will move the grasses and uh, material around here, so there's. Lots of footage without wildlife there, but plenty of coyotes. And, oh, we do have an eagle that landed in front of that camera. I'm going to move this camera that's over here on this tree out. I've got to come down here and harvest more of the sand for some growing beds. I'll show what we'll do with those in a future video. shooting this with my uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black that I've had for years and uh, GoPro had replaced my gimbal that was having trouble so I'm so happy this, this is back. I purchased a couple of other gimbals to work with the GoPro camera but neither of them work nearly as well as this gimbal. Recently I posted a video, hopefully I did follow me with the uh, SkyDO2 tracking me. Up ahead here is where the SkyDO2 lost track of me. But uh, we did take a tour from the farm in case you didn't see that video. Really impressed with the SkyDO2. dump trailer here, the mechanism that holds the, the ton. That works here is broken. Trying to find the parts for it online, they went like 75 bucks for that. So I bought another hitch, we'll see if this one works. But I'm gonna go get on Elon, head up, uh, Head up, get on Elon, and then head down there and see if I can smooth out some of that uh, soil down there. So that's it. Let's hope everything goes well. So I'm in Elon now, heading down and back. Uh, I had to go get to see another outer, I guess you call it a hoodie, a sweatshirt. Uh, Wind chill. The wind's got a, coming out of the winds uh, out of the north northwest. It really is something. And uh, so today 
I'm going to take it really easy. Uh, family's coming over so we can visit with each other, which will be really nice. Quite honestly, I'm a little bit wiped out after the last few days. This, this week's been challenging getting jobs done around here. And the weather certainly has been a challenge as well. So, we'll head down and see what we can get accomplished down there if I can smooth things out. Now, I don't have the grading bucket on. I actually just have the, uh, the excavation bucket on there. Uh, but it's enough of a surface area. I should be able to smooth things out some. And again, the only area that I'm working on, planning on working on right now, hopefully, there's the Hulk over there, the big boy, and usually I use the Hulk to go ahead and smooth things out, but when there's big puddles of water and there's so much sand and soft material and I want to smooth out all of the stone that's there, uh, this actually helps out a bit more initially until I can get the pitch right so I can get the water to drain off the surface. <coughs> see how I can get things to work. So, here's where the raspberry plants are all planted over there in pond six. Solar vehicles back there. Okay, signing off, and we'll get down there and see how things work. Okay, so we went over and we worked, we'll go over there in just a moment, but we worked over in the, where the roadway is over there. I'm going to need a hell of a lot more uh, rock 
from uh, the stone walls, which is way up over in that area, <laughs> way up there. But this is the area, you can see some fresh dirt there. I took the pile of topsoil that was here, put it on top of it. I took a tree stump out from down there where the, next to the roadway. This is the area where the sand pile was, right, right in here. This ash tree I've talked about in the plant past. This one's going to come out. Uh, you know, this one still is partially alive, but this is one that, uh, you know, the main stem got damaged years ago. And as a result, it's got a big split. It's tried to heal, but it's rotting in the center. So this one will come out. This will end up being turned into firewood. And uh, so I'll f sacrifice a small maple here, take this one out. We'll have firewood and wood chips from it, but we'll create another uh, hula culture pit right in here as well. And that way I'll be able to take a few of these stumps and some of the rotten uh, wood from like the dead trees that are here, bury that in this area here, and be able to take what is apparently sand out of this area here, just like we got out of this hula culture pit. But I took that stump, I popped it in the hole here, I grabbed as much of the vine as I could safely get. The rest of this vine will all come out uh, after I'm careful about taking down these dead trees here. A whole bunch of these dead trees and it's way too windy for me to try anything today and too busy with other things. But we got the initial uh, covering of the hula culture pit here covered. I scraped up some of the rock and dirt from around the edge here and uh, this will sink some over the next three years. It'll sink about a foot and a half in total uh, but I'll keep taking material off of the forest floor, filling, uh, building it up, make it nice and level around here and then we'll plant some chestnut trees or some oak trees or maple trees right in here, protect them Maybe some persimmons, they can tolerate the, uh, the shade cover as well. I've got to get these logs out of here at some point in time. I've got different sets of logs, but I've got to work on these access roads around in here so I can get the uh, Optimus Maximus, the Kubota uh, L6060 hooked on to the dump trailer and be able to get up here. We'll go down and take a quick look at what I did do down here. It's so nice and quiet and peaceful in the woods. It's really windy outside, outside of the forest area. I do love spending time down in here. Once you get used to those high 80s and 90 degree days with a high humidity. When you get down into the 50s with the high winds, man, I tell you, it gets cold. All right, so this is the area here that I was just working on and I really do need to bring in sorry about wiggling the camera here bring in a heck of a lot more uh, stone in here uh, there's low spots right in here so I gotta bring this up make this a nice smooth transition down into here I gotta bring more stone over onto this side but this is real soupy uh, very soft muddy uh, sand here and you see some of the water is weeping right up through the area here as I was packing it down yeah too deep here more rock needed down in here it's getting better because it's a higher concentration of stone here so this isn't too bad but I've really like I mentioned I've already have two two and a half foot of uh, stone below this water line here and I just got to build this all right up so I can get out into that area out by the uh, the beaver dams out there 
and work in the area. And I've got a lot of dead wood to bring up out of here as well. So that's it for today's video. It's enough. Hopefully uh, this all makes sense. The materials we dig up from one spot of the property, we put in other areas of the property. And we just have to keep modifying things until things work out nicely. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. By all means, folks, stay safe, take good care of yourselves, and have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.